Have you ever been surprised when you come to the general labor sector and you find that you don't actually have uh, really any field guide, field-based sanctioned global guidance on, on measurement? The IDEAS team with local partners in Nigeria, Ethiopia and India have been engaged in field work in each of the three countries looking at a series of questions about the Gates Foundation's maternal and newborn health strategy overall. We aim to take an independent evaluation perspective, collaborating closely with implementing partners, but remaining largely separate. Our focus is on actionable measurement for change. I'd like to speak today about the first step in actionable measurement, and that's describing the intervention. <coughs> So thinking about the principles of actionable measurement, Christina has laid out for us the importance of being very clear and purposeful about understanding what's being implemented and exactly what you expect it to change. So that takes us to the next stage, which is wanting to understand the magnitude of change that occurs. But my key message, the learning that has emerged for us throughout this process is that when measuring change in targeted outcomes, it's also important for implementation planning to understand why changes do or indeed do not occur. Just to come back to my original kind of message from this piece, scaling up as an art not a science. So there's a real human feel to it, a kind of a softer side to it. It's not necessarily technical or predictable, but it's other things. To carry forward the discussion of scaling up, uh, we can highlight in particular the centrality of the health system readiness and responsiveness. <coughs> In practical terms, this means being able to understand local context and local data and using that evidence for district level decision making. It is a fundamental ongoing step in the adjustment and the calibration of health system processes and necessary for sustainable scaling up of maternal and newborn health innovations. We found characterization um, as a major guidance in our implementation. You see, and characterization worked so well for us because um, it, 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 it is in tandem with a very coherent um, you know, uh, theory of change, you understand, which was very strategic and provided us um, a pragmatic implementation approach. I think it's important to know that for you to scale up um, any um, you know, intervention, the state should see the information you are bringing uh, as an evidence that can be trusted and it, uh, and it is relevant to the situation on ground. I think that the session really highlighted the need to the pointing out that monitoring is not enough, that we need to go deeper and deeper into what are the actual mechanisms at play, what are some of the sort of uh, the functions, uh, as you say, Lynn, in terms of what's really happening here, right? What's really driving this change and getting a little bit deeper uh, into that? Um, can we? A question I have is can we actually match the evidence that we have and the mechanisms of change and innovation across the continuum of care and the interventions we want to see scaled up? So is there some ability to map that so that we have al almost a catalog of, of evidence and what the most impactful uh, mechanisms are that actually move those, those coverage numbers? And I think the last piece is just that the soft, what people might perceive as the soft process pieces are just as important as uh, the spreadsheets. That spending time in the political economy, spending time at the district level, really working on those processes is of equal value 
uh, as our beautiful graphs. And I just want to thank uh, the team for coming and thank all of you for a great, great session.